Hi everybody, I'm Michael. Today we're going to talk about how you can take care of the fernwood snake plant and how you can also easily propagate this plant. These make wonderful houseplants. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow! These beautiful snake plants go by the botanical name Sansevieria fernwood. Botanists have uh, also recently classified this plant or this, the, this the genus in the Dracaena family. So there's a little bit of back and forth going on. It's either it's either going to be called Dracaena uh, fernwood or, as it's been commonly known for many many years, as Sansevieria fernwood. These adorable little house plants are native to Africa and they make wonderful, wonderful house plants. Super low maintenance. They're really, really cool plants. And they also don't grow very large. So if you have a, a small apartment or a small space, these plants will do very well for you. The fernwood snake plant is known for these long emerald green grass-like leaves that, gr that grow from a center point in the plant. I put, her, I put these in a, in a rectangular plant to make it look like it's a little a bed of grass uh, over we actually it's, it's it, we always have it over here behind our our other houseplant videos you've seen her in the in the past she's going here but by the way sidebar we did a orchid rescue video about a year or so ago and these puppies are back and blooming this one bloom is blooming on her second round look at them they've all come back I'm so proud of them sorry about that but we've uh, shifted plants around because we took the uh, fernwood here to, to, to talk about her with you today. And these other two I have in my home office uh, up on a shelf. But they're really, really cool houseplants. They have this wonderful, cool grass-like, jungly grass-like like vibe. And the leaves actually have like these dark uh, emerald, dark emerald green with this light grass green uh, tiger stripe going on. So it's really, really cool. We'll, we'll zoom in so you can see this up close on a side-by-side. On a -side. But it's a wonderful, wonderful houseplant. I, I kid you not, super low maintenance. It does not grow does not grow large. It can go up to about two feet. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, they're they're uh, petite in size, but they're also very slow growing. They don't grow very fast. But that's not to say that you can't have plenty of these in your home because these plants are also very easy to propagate. So let's go on to that step. For propagating your fernwood, we recommend using one of two methods. One is the cutting method where you place her in water or water plus leca. And I'll show you that method right now. You just basically take some, some pruning shears. Uh, as you may know from our past videos, I always recommend you spray your, you spray your hand and you spray your, your pruning shears with alcohol. I've already done this, but I'll do it again. Just so that you don't in introduce any pathogens into the plant when you're cutting, cutting through the tissue, the plant tissue. So uh, again, that's a super, that's a little cool uh, uh, plant hack that we always recommend that people do when you're, when you're gonna do something like this. So what we're gonna do here is just look for a, a large leaf. We're gonna grab this gigantor one over here. And I'm just gonna cut her on an angle. And it's that easy, that easy. Just place her in water, boom. And in about a month, up to a month, she'll start throwing out roots and then you have a new plant, it's that easy. Another thing we've done that we found that grows, that the plant roots a little bit faster is when we put her in LECA with water. <clears throat> Let me grab another, another leaf here. I'm gonna go on the same plant, cut on an angle. And here's another stalk, a leaf stem, uh, or actually a leaf. And I'm just gonna place her in LECA and the LECA in water. The LECA over time will, will sink to the bottom here. It's kind of floating a little bit. But the LECA, we feel, creates this really cool biofilm that, the, that helps the plant um, generate roots a little bit quicker. We've done it with pothos, and we've done it with our, with our, with our satin pothos as well. And they, they tend to, to really generate roots a little bit faster, but both methods will work. Now, it's super, super, super easy. I can't overstate how easy it is to, to propagate this plant. Again, it grows slow, so you have to be patient. And, and if yours doesn't root in, in three or four weeks, just give it some more time, They'll, they should root for you. You, you do wanna make sure you put chlorine-free water. You use chlorine-free water, at least it's set out for two days or so, so before you, before you put it in here, you don't wanna add chlorinated water to any of your propagating 
medium. So now that we've talked about that method, I'm going to tell you another method that's, that's even quicker. And if you have a lot of plants like we do here, you can simply go down to the roots. And I've already done this, but um, you can pull out, pull out from the mother plant, break off a piece and look, she's got a, she's growing another baby and just separate her from the mother plant. You can use your pruning shears. And again, very important to talk about the alcohol. So you don't want to, cause you're closer to the soil down here versus taking a leaf from, a, from above the soil. And, and you don't want to get any pathogens in there. So this is just, it's that easy. You place this in the, place this in soil. You want to lean this one down because she's got some roots here growing out already. So you want the, this to be under, this to be in the soil. So what we'll probably do is cut this, as we could, I used to call these carrots when I was a kid because the Sansevieras have, tend to have these orange carrot-like uh, roots. Um, so you can cut her here along this piece here and you can actually get two uh, fernwood snake plants out of this. And we'll, we'll zoom in so you can see this up close so you get an idea of what, of what uh, all this is, uh, looks like. So it's, it's really, really cool. There's something hanging out on this plant here. Oh, oh, it's probably one of our, <laughs> a flower from, a flower from our uh, shamrock. How pretty. So now that we talked about propagate, oh, sorry, y'all, let me show you. So the one that we, we've propagated this one in water and LECA. And we'll, again, we'll show you, we'll show you. This is, this was more than a month. We, she actually shot a baby out too. So this, this is what these guys will start to do for you. In about, you know, this is well over a month we had her growing in the Leckett and water medium. I just didn't get around to, I still haven't got around to planting her. So we'll, you know, we'll show you again this up close. But it's really, really cool, right? Got another baby. So now we're going to have a family, a whole family affair. All right, so now that we talked about propagation, we're going to rotate over and talk about care instructions for your fernwood. On plant care, your fernwood will light medium light, and that's gonna be between 100 and 500 foot candles, but this plant can also handle low light, and that's in the 25 foot candle to 100 foot candle range. These are amazingly tough. I can't stress it enough. Plants, snake plants are very tough. They can ha handle a wide range of lighting conditions. You can you can even give them bright light over, over a thousand foot candles, but you don't want direct sun because they'll scorch the leaves. But these are these are wonderful in that in that regard that you can put them pretty much anywhere in your home and they're going to do well. Again, they grow slowly, but they're such a cool planting. I just love them; they're so cute. So for lighting, they like medium light. That's probably the most preferred between 100 and 500 foot candles. And on soil, I brought some potting mix here, so I'm going to talk about soil. They prefer a well-drained potting mix. So I'm going to show you our part potting mix here. This is a uh, 80, uh, sorry, 85% uh, indoor potting mix. We like the Miracle Grow, Grow brand and 15% perlite. We got the chunky perlite here because this is going to create a well-drained soil medium for your, for your fernwood. The one thing about this plant that the main takeaway is, is that you want a well-drained potting mix and you don't want to overwater your plants. I'll go into watering in a second, but I'm, what we're going to do now is just show you what we're gonna do with these new babies that we, we created. We're gonna fill up, we have another little Ikea pot, love these guys, and we got some little container here. We're gonna fill her up with, with this potting mix and just keep filling her up. And then I'm gonna add the new fern, fernwood babies. This is faster. over here maybe you can see this a little better see the mix this is going to drain really well add a little more oh probably use it all Ooh. measure that perfectly okay so there we have our potting mix in the container. There we go. And now all you need to do is create a little divot. Use the back side of the spoon here. And you want to set these, these roots down, even where you see a little bit of orange here, 
you want to set that in the pot down in the soil and uh, And it's that easy. Let me show you. Here's the first one. We have our first one in there. Soil. Super easy. Just place it there just so that the, the orange color of the roots is below the uh, top of the soil. Now on this one, I waited, uh, we talked about plant propagation, I wait, waited till we got the soil uh, comment here on plant care. So I want to show you what we can do here. We're going to get two plants out of this one because it has the, the, the base plant here and, and a pup that, that came off the plant when we uh, pulled her from the, the, grow, uh, the container here. So again, you wanna make sure you, you, you spray alcohol on your, your pruning shears and your hands, we've already done that. Um, and uh, we'll just do it again, just to be safe. There's nothing wrong with that because I did touch the soil a little bit here. Out a little bit and what we'll do is this one has several roots on the the stalk here the, the root the root mass of the, the fernwood so we're going to cut we're actually going to cut down here on that's where we're making our cut because we have several roots on the baby the pup and we already have some major roots or a lot of roots here on the other the other uh, plant so now we have three and again, all we have to do is just create a divot in the soil. And then we'll just water it in after we're done. Oh, I need to go deeper. This is deep. Much deeper. So there's a lot of roots, a lot, a lot of roots. Get that one down in there. Yes. Wonderful. Oh, this one tipped a little bit. Put her back. Okay, and now the next one. Now, one thing you may want to do is you can add some tape or um, a little plant stake to to keep these guys in place because they don't have a lot of roots and so they may tip over. So you can you can create a little a little. Uh, you've done this with some some uh, chopsticks, make a little teepee, and then that kind of just holds them in place. But you get the idea. So here we have three new babies. So these will start to start to fill in and send out more pups. Oops, actually, you all, I didn't cover a root. I didn't see you. I was not paying attention. I'm sorry. I got you now. I got you. Don't you worry. There you go. There you go. And a nice new home. Oh, so happy. Now that we have them planted in the soil, I'm going to go and put in a plant stake to hold these guys because they don't have very many roots, as you know. And we want to just kind of Hold them together so they don't wobble, wobble while they, while they start to to root. So I'm just going to loosely tie these together, and then tie it to our stake. And then I'm going to twist this a little bit to get it right where I need it. I don't bonk it while they're rooting, while they're rooting. There we go. Doesn't have to be fancy, just enough to hold them upright, and that way they don't have to keep readjusting their roots as they grow.
in probably you know about a month we can take away the steak and these guys will be on their way so what all I need to do now is just add some water. You want to let your water, like I said, stay out uh, 24 hours. Uh, you want chlorine-free water. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned that, but you want chlorine-free water on typically all your house plants. You want to use chlorine-free water. So now that we've watered her in, she's all set and the propagation is done. Super cool. So now let's talk about watering. Your fernwood will want to be watered every 14 days. And don't water her if the soil is damp. Big takeaway I mentioned is what? Good potting mix, well-drained mix, and we'll go into written care instructions in a minute so you can see all this. But you, you always want to uh, check your soil before you're watering. We recommend every, every, seven, every uh, two, uh, two weeks, every 14 days, but test with the two knuckle, two knuckle rule where you dig your finger in, your pinky, whatever, go down two inches. If the pot is shallow, you don't have to go down two inches, go down uh, you know, an inch and a half or so. And if your finger comes back with a lot of moisture and soil on her, like this, this is still a little wet, don't water at that 14 day mark. Let her go another day or two. Because the biggest thing that can hurt this plant is over watering these plants. They don't, they don't need a lot of water which is the really cool thing about this plant and that it's low maintenance in that regard. It doesn't need a lot of light, it's not fussy, doesn't grow and get gangly and get out of control like some of our other plants grow very, very fast, the pothos and the coleus and some others. But these, these are just great. They're almost like set them, set them and forget them. Really cool. Now, on fertilizer, we recommend you use just a simple 20-20-20, a liquid 20-20-20 fertilizer and apply, apply it to when your uh, uh, to your plant from April through September. On humidity, she's not fussy. She'll do well in a home AC of 30, 30 to 40% uh, humidity. And on pests, we haven't had any. Super tough plant, no, none of our snake plants actually. They can, they can get, you know, the, the cat, bad cast of characters of mealybug, scale, spider mites, but, but rarely, I, we, haven't, we, haven't seen, we haven't seen that at all on our plants. So, so now what we'll do is we'll rotate over into written care instructions for you. So you get all the stuff that I talked about, including the propagation notes, so that uh, you can take a screenshot, if you will, and use it, use it for, your, uh, for your plant care needs. All right, let's go on to that step. Thanks for joining us today. We hope this was helpful. But if you have any thoughts or questions, just leave it in the comment box below and we'll make sure we get back to you. And until the next video, bye. If you found value in this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We post weekly. Thanks.